In this video, I'm going to work through problems 9 through 16, and the directions say to solve each system using substitution. So the system here has two equations. Both of them are in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b for both of them. So using substitution means we need to solve for one variable and plug it in to the other equation, or substitute in the other equation. Well, in this case, these problems are uh, pretty interesting because y is solved on both equations. So if y equals this expression and y equals this expression, then these two expressions must be equal to each other since they're both equal to y. So what we can do is go ahead and just put them equal to each other and then solve. Notice that only x is present, so one variable, one equation. So I'll put the 2x over there, so minus 2x from both sides. And we can minus 13 from both sides. So these cancel and these cancel, putting the variables on the left and the constants on the right. So 2x equals 9 minus 13 is negative 4. So x equals negative 2. Now that we have the value for x, we can go ahead and plug that back in to one of those equations up there. So I'll slide it over. And if y equals 4x plus 13, then we can put negative 2 in, and we can say 4 times negative 2 plus 13, and that'll be the value of y, which will be negative 8 plus 13, which is 5. So if y equals 5 and x equals negative 2, then our solution will be the ordered pair negative 2, 5. If we were also classifying this system, this one would be consistent and independent since they cross at one point. Number 10 is another system where each equation has been solved for y. So again, what we can do since y equals this expression and y equals this expression is just take those expressions and set them equal to each other since they both equal y. So we can say negative 2x minus 11 equals negative 5x minus 17. And then it's just a matter of solving, so we could add 5x to both sides and add 11 to both sides. So we'll see that negative 2x and 5x makes 3x, and negative 17 plus 11 makes negative 6, so that means that x is negative 2. And again, we can plug it back into the equation up top. So y equals negative 2x minus 11. So we'll plug negative 2 in for x, and we'll get y equals 4 minus 11. And 4 minus 11 is negative 7. So once again, since we have actual values for x and y, we can make them into an ordered pair. And we'll say negative 2, negative 7 is the ordered pair. And once again, if we're classifying this, it's going to be consistent and independent since they intersect at one point. Number 11 is 3x plus 5y equals 7, and then y equals 8x plus 10. Again, using substitution, we need to take one of these equations, have it solved for one variable, and then plug it into the other equation. Well, it's nice because the second equation has y all by itself, and y equals this expression, 8x plus 10. So what we can do is take this 8x plus 10 and substitute him in for y on the other equation since 8x plus 10 equals y. So when we rewrite this, it'll be 3x plus 5, but instead of putting y, we'll put the 8x plus 10 that equals y equals 7. We can use a distributive property, so 3x plus 40x plus 50 equals 7. So 43x plus 50 equals 7. And when we subtract 50 from both sides, we'll get 43x equals negative 43, which means x is equal to negative 1. We can take this negative 1 and plug them back up in here. We'll want to go ahead and plug it into the equation that's already solved for y. That way we're not doing any extra work. So y equals 8x plus 10. So, if y equals 8x plus 10, and x is negative 1, then we can plug the negative 1 in for x, and y will equal negative x, excuse me, negative 8 plus 10, which will be 2. 
And again, we have x is negative 1 and y is 2, so it can be an ordered pair, negative 1, 2, where the x comes first and the y comes second. And again, if you're going to classify this system, it's going to be consistent and independent, again, because it has an answer right here, an ordered pair, so that means that the two lines intersect at that point. For number 12, we have the system here, y equals negative 8x minus 2, and then 7x minus 5, y equals 10. And using substitution, we notice we have one of the variables solved for, and y equals this expression here, negative 8x minus 2. So this negative 8x minus 2 can go ahead and be substituted for the y in the other equation, since they both equal y here. So when we do that, we'll have 7x minus 5, but instead of putting y, we'll put this other expression in here that equals y, and that stuff's going to equal 10. So we can use the distributive property again, and we get 7x plus 40x plus 10 equals 10. Well, after 47x, when we combine like terms, plus 10 equals 10, it's going to work out that these 10s are going to cancel each other out, and 47x equals 0, which means 47 times some value equals 0. Well, x must equal 0 then, because it's the only way that's going to work out. And if that's the case, if x equals 0, let's go ahead and plug it back in up there. We're going to plug it in to the equation where y is already solved for, because that uh, is going to make us do less work. So y equals negative 8x minus 2. We plug the 0 in there, so negative 8 times 0 minus 2. Is y equals 0 minus 2? So y equals negative 2. So then the ordered pair then is 0 negative 2, and we can put those in parentheses there. So these two lines cross at the point 0, negative 2. So if you're going to classify that, it's going to be consistent and independent. Number 13, we have 6x plus 3y equals negative 30, and then 2x plus y equals negative 10. Well, in the past examples using substitution, uh, we already had one of the variables solved for. In this case, we don't, but it won't be too hard to solve for y in the second equation. We can just subtract 2x from both sides. So if that's the case, then y will equal negative 2x minus 10. And then knowing that y equals negative 2x minus 10, we can substitute that into the, for the y in the other equation. So the other equation says 6x plus 3y but instead of the y, we'll now put our negative 2x minus 10, and that equals negative 30. So we'll do the distributive property. So 6x minus 6x, and we'll say minus 30 equals negative 30. Well, it's interesting because these two x's will cancel, and we're left with negative 30 equals negative 30, which is a true statement. So it seems like all the variables canceled out, we were left with a true statement, so what that means is there's going to be infinite solutions because the lines are coincident. The lines are on top of each other, they are the same line. So, infinite solutions. And if you're going to classify this, this would be consistent and dependent since the lines are the same and they lie on top of each other. We also call those coincident lines. On well, number 14, we have 7x plus y equals 9, and then negative 3x plus 5y equals 7 for this system. In the first equation, you see that y is almost solved for, so we can go ahead and finish solving for y by subtracting 7x from both sides. When we do that, we'll see that y equals negative 7x plus 9. So if we have this expression that's equivalent to y, we can plug them into y on the other equation. So we'll have negative 3x plus 5 times y, which is now this expression, negative 7x plus 9, and that equals 7. So the distributive property will help, and we'll have negative 3x minus 35x plus 45 equals 7. Combining like terms will give us negative 38x plus 45 equals 7. So then we can subtract 45 from both sides negative 38x equals negative 38. So x should be 1. So if that's the case and x equals 1, we can plug it back into this equation and we'll use the one where y is already solved for, so we don't have to do that work again. 
So if y equals negative 7x plus 9, we'll plug that 1 in for x and get negative 7 times 1 plus 9, which would be just negative 7 plus 9, which would be 2. So then, if my x value is 1 and my y value is 2, I can have an ordered pair. My ordered pair is 1, 2. So again, if you're going to classify this system, it will be consistent and independent since it has one intersection and the point is 1, 2. For number 15, we have the system x minus 2y equals negative 18 and negative x minus 3y equals negative 7. So it looks like this x in the first equation is almost solved for. So let's go ahead and add 2y to both sides and then that will get that x by itself. When we do that, we'll get x equals 2y minus 18. Now that we know that 2y minus 18 is equivalent to x, we can plug that into the other equation for x. So we'll get negative x, which is negative 2y minus 18, and then we'll write down the rest of the equation, minus 3y equals negative 7. Distributing the negative through here will give us a negative 2y plus 18 minus 3y equals negative 7. Then we can combine these like terms to get negative 5y plus 18 equals negative 7. Subtract this 18 from both sides. Negative 5y equals negative 25, which will give us y equals 5. Then this y equals 5 can be plugged in to this equation up here, where we have x already isolated, because we don't want to have to do that work again, so we'll, x is already solved for, so we'll just plug in 5 for y. So if x equals 2y minus 18, We'll plug in the 5 for y, minus 18. So x equals 10 minus 18. So it looks like x equals negative 8. So our ordered pair will be x, which is negative 8, y, which is 5. And it looks like these two lines will intersect at one point at negative 8, 5, which means their classification will be consistent and independent. Number 16 is the final problem under our substitution section, and it's going to be negative x plus 2y equals negative 6, and then x minus 2y equals 7. Looks like we can solve for x in this equation by adding 2y to both sides. So we'll just say that x equals 2y plus 7. So this 2y plus 7 I can go ahead and substitute into that other x. So it'll be negative x, so it'll be opposite of 2y plus 7 plus 2y equals negative 6. So when I distribute that negative through, I'll get a negative 2y minus 7 plus 2y equals negative 6. It looks like this negative 2y and the positive 2y will cancel out and we'll be left with negative 7 equals negative 6. Well, all of our variables canceled out and we were left with a false statement. So negative 7 does not equal negative 6. So what I'm going to say about this is there is no solution. Well, why would there be no solution? Well, what this means is that these two lines are parallel. They have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, meaning they don't ever intersect. So they're parallel. They're not the same line. They're away from each other, and they never touch. So there's going to be no solution. If we were going to classify that, we would just say this system is inconsistent.